Today's video is uh, it's a fairly simple and straightforward one. It also includes a personal dilemma of mine. In recent weeks, you may have seen a video that I posted which is suggesting I am looking at changing my irons. There's one deliberation when you're changing your irons and that's where do they go from and where do they finish? And that's part of today's test. So when I say where does it start and end, at this point I'm talking about the lower end of the bag, the shorter end of the bag that is. What we often do and what I do is I will buy my iron set from the longest iron in a bag, 5.4 iron, I'll buy into pitching wedge and then I'll swap out into speciality wedges. I do it every time I buy a set of irons but the thing I'm asking or the question I'm asking is why do I do it and is it going to be detrimental to my overall performance? You see this? Oh, it's just gone a yard too long. It's a speciality wedge, as I'm going to call it. For the purposes of the video, we're using the T22 from Mizuno. Their wedge lineup is unreal, looks superb, but effectively, it's a blade. And this comes from my existing set. That's going to be a little bit short, is it? Short and right, we can see the wind howling off that right hand side. This effectively is what I would call in my category, a player's distance iron. It's the 0311P, it's the gap wedge. They're exactly the same in terms of the loft, but they perform very, very differently and they look very, very differently. And my question is to myself and also to you, is am I making a big cock up each time I order my irons and not carrying on through the bag into lob wedge, sand wedge, gap wedges in my existing set, rather than doing the rather strange thing, which is go to pitching wedge in maybe a game improvement iron set and then decide I want to go to blades for my wedges. That's a bit weird, isn't it? So the question is, what is the difference between the short irons in the bag of your set? So for example, like I said, the gap wedge, sand wedge, lob wedge. Obviously it's going to differ from set to set, but effectively it means that you're looking at exactly the same club that you see throughout your iron set blended into your wedges. That seems very logical. And often the difference will be quite simple. When you look at a speciality wedge, like I've just suggested, they're blade-like. So a very, very thin top line. There's a difference in the sole in terms of its width. There's also in the way that it's cut and shaped and that allows you to do a, maybe a little bit more in terms of its versatility of a club. But ultimately, you end up switching out from your irons that are in your set from a visual perspective into something that you would ultimately never normally go near and that's a blade iron in the bag. And I want to know why we do it and is it worth us doing it? Before I go any further, Comments down below, how many of you go through to pitching wedge and then start to put some speciality wedges in the bag that are nothing like suited to what perhaps your irons are? Right, okay, so first thing I want to find out is when I'm faced with a full shot with my 50 degree wedge, what is performance like? And how do I, uh, how do I feel at address? We're looking for, yeah, just over 100. We've got 105, maybe move a bit forward there. This is slightly into the wind. That's a really high ball flight. Distance about right, are we going to hang on left edge? I can't quite see into the sun, I think we're left edge of the green, but again, felt really good. Not exactly sure where I got that one, whether it was out the middle or not, but I'm happy. But I'm now looking down at a, I'm looking down at a blade. It's as simple as that. And straight away, the mentality is this. I don't feel like they're exactly the same loft, and hear me out on this one. I don't feel like there's enough there's as much power in terms of distance, yardage, in this as there is in that. It's ridiculous, I know, but that's what it's telling me. That's what my head or my eyes are telling me. Now that's obviously gonna be wrong, or in theory, it should be wrong. Let's let that wind die just a little, or perhaps just a little bit too far out here. And again, roll that's right at the flag, that one. If we've got the yardage right, that could go in. Well, again, I can't gauge the distance exactly where that is, but it was right at the flag. Really good feel. Took very similar sort of swing to the, what we did with the gap wedge. At this point, nothing separating them except for one big thing. No, two big things. The visual thing is massive and the feel out of the T22 is that much better. Right, this is really interesting. I just said to Hannah, we was literally, I was uh, trying to squint and find where my ball was gone on the green. 
And interesting enough, we didn't make the green. Have you got that one on camera still? So that's the T22 that I said I absolutely pured. This is the uh, the uh, the gap iron, if you uh, gap wedge rather from PXG. And the interesting bit for me there is, is that sort of, I don't know, it's maybe 10 or 15 yards separating them in terms of distance. And yeah, I did say he was playing into the wind. It probably was a bit of a stretch in terms of getting to the flag. But also now I'm just thinking, well, that idea that I said, well, have I got enough sort of meat on the bone in terms of the T22? They're both 50 degree wedges, but they both traveled totally different. And if I'm honest with you, I probably pured the T22 just that little bit better, I would have said. That's slightly worrying. The first thing to look at and the notable difference is the sole width. I mean, I've been quite shocked. Like I said, when I brought these P model PXG irons out in recent weeks, it's just when you put them against the kind of smaller profile clubs, just how bulky and big they are. It's not necessarily a negative though. It's obviously that width of sole is a big help for a lot of us golfers, but these speciality wedges, I'm going to call them, they're often shaped a lot differently, not just in the width, but in the shape and profile to allow you to sort of open the club face up a little bit, uh, manufacture shots if you like, and manufacture loft that you want to maybe add or decrease. So that it may be, in theory, a little bit more flexible. We've got a situation now, we're sort of 70 yards out. It's obviously, it's a half shot. It's that thing where, like I said, you want to manufacture a shot. Now, arguably you would say, this comes down to the T22. It's the type of iron wedge rather, that the better players would use for this type of field shot or this type of shape of shot. So we shall see. I will try with my existing club. And the idea for me is uh, we've got uphill shot. I'd want to flight it just down a little bit, lower ball flight, and it should kill itself into the bank. All right, the flag. That seems to have sat down pretty nice one stop. No problems with that. I think, again, don't forget the one thing that I like about the PXG irons, the O311s, is the fact that they're forged. They've got a fantastic feel on them. But yet again, the first thing noticeable here, it almost seems to present with itself with more loft than what it does on my existing set. And it's certainly got that different mentality. It looks like to me, for some reason, more loft and it'll pop it up more. We shall see. Get up, get up. Not quite got enough of that, got it a little bit heavier. I'm gonna just see, I've got another ball here. We'll give it another chance, because I did catch it a little bit heavy. But was that again, would the bounce, the extra width of sole, would that have helped me on my uh, set iron, if you like? Let's just get that a little bit more. And we're probably in similar positions again. I don't think it's quite fired out quite as much as what it did in this 0311. And I put that down again to, we don't know exactly where the strike location was there. It felt a little toey for me, the second shot from the uh, T22. And maybe that's where that difference is. Is there still forgiveness packed into these set irons than there is in the speciality blade-like wedges. Well, interestingly enough, pitch mark, if you just have a look, spin round, that was the one that I pitched up short. This is the second T22, we're playing downwind, interestingly enough. And the first thing to note is that this one has zipped back. And I've noticed on a few shots that we've managed to get a lot more uh, bite in terms of spin with the T22. And you'll notice the um, the gap wedge from the 0311s has just popped itself on a couple of feet. Now there was a slightly flatter ball flight from the gap wedge, but I do think again, you would argue, is that something that, first of all, there's five yards difference in carry, but that was about my execution of the shot. One has zipped back, is that about the newness of the wedges? One is two and a half years old in terms of that gap wedge. The other is virtually, well, it's a brand new, hardly used wedge. So is that performance coming from uh, the newness of the wedges, if that's a word, or is it down to the performance attributes of those blade wedges? Right, so next scenario is a bit of a, you'd probably not use a 50 degree wedge, but it's where I think the T22 or the bladed wedges, the speciality wedges would certainly come into their own. I'm gonna start off with the 0311. We've not got no green. It's all about feel, it's all about finesse. I just wanna drop it out and release. But this is where, that extra bit of mass that's in the head 
of the 0311 just suggests it's not as delicate for this kind of shot. Well, that's not done too bad. We need to be a little bit higher. But again, I just feel like the head weight is just um, dictating a little bit and it's very hard to control with this as well. I feel like I can just open that up just that little bit in terms of the head and uh, play a different shot. And that suggests, yeah, that was a lot better. I was able to give that little bit extra loft onto the T22 again because of that profiling underneath that I couldn't do with my own gap wedge. It's fair to say there was a big difference there. No doubt about it on that evidence. It'd be the speciality wedge that you want in the bag. Right, so with all things being said so far, I've got to admit on that personal dilemma of my own, I'm not too sure where I stand on it, to be honest with you, and the testing will continue on a personal note. But I suppose ultimately what it comes down to is confidence because that is key at this end of the game. We've set up this final scenario, we're 110 yards out. We've got four bunkers and we've got the flag. And this is where it really counts. What club do I want to be grabbing that gives me the ultimate confidence? Do I want the kind of help and assistance of the gap wedge, the, the club that I feel gives a little bit more help? Or do I want that kind of finesse, the feel that came from the T22? I think the only way to find out is we'll play two of these shots. I know that, like I said, I'm so familiar with the gap wedge, it's almost a little bit unfair. But what I'm looking at right now, there's no fear that a nice smooth swing and this should be up there somewhere. I've got total confidence in this profile that it's going to uh, do a job for me. That could be the best shot I've played all day. And that's short. <laughs> well, wow, maybe we got the yardage wrong. There's confidence for you. I absolutely love that. We might again just be a little bit far out. The wind is uh, all over the show at the moment. I'll switch into this. I absolutely love the look of this thing. That profile is definitely a lot different. The actual head weight seems totally different as well, though. This seems so much lighter than what it does in that 0311. And that's what I said about that familiarity and sort of tempo. You know, you switch from your 9-iron your or your pitching wedge, your regular set, and then you pick out the bag, your speciality wedge, your Vokey, your uh, TM mill grind, whatever it may be. And all of a sudden the profile of club has changed significantly. And this feels so much lighter. And therefore you're just worried that it ruins the tempo. Anyway, we're gonna have to give it a bit more than what I just did, but let's not ruin things by trying to hit it too hard. I've hit it too hard and pulled it. I've pulled it, it was plenty long enough. That's probably the perfect shot in terms of distance but with that extra little bit of uh, oomph from my own swing, managed to pull that down the left. Again, even though the pulled shot went down that left-hand side, the feel out of this is really, really good, but I can't help but deny that when I stand over the ball with, a, with an iron that I've seen right throughout the set, I still get greater confidence, I think, from that 0311 because it's that familiarity and therefore that breeds the confidence. Okay, so what have I learned from today's video and our wedge test? Well, I've learned of all my, um, certainly my full wedges need a bit of work. I've got a tendency to pull them left, but that aside, in terms of the wedges performance, what did I learn? Well, I reckon kind of something, maybe I already knew, maybe you did too. I think that kind of on, on full shots, I think I would prefer to have the iron that I'm used to seeing in the bag, to be quite honest with you. And like I said, from a confidence perspective, there's no change, nothing changing, no, no questions being asked. You've got a shorter version, a more lofted version of the irons that you've got in the bag. That seems really logical. The only time I would favor the speciality wedges is in and around the green. And like I said, just that little bit of versatility that a specialist wedge gives, a little bit enhanced feel. So for me, on a personal level, I'll probably end up doing what I do now, and you've seen in, in, in other videos that I've made, is that I'm not really one that carries sort of three, four wedges in the bag. I've never been an advocate of that. So what I do is generally go down to sort of pitching wedge, maybe throw in a sand wedge in terms of my regular set of irons, 
and then I'll have one really lofted. I generally carry a 58 in the bag to play bunker shots and some sort of lofted lob shots in and around the green. So I would probably continue to do that because like I said, from my perspective, and I think from a lot of average golfers' perspective, having your iron set continue into your wedges is probably a smart move. And if you don't like that idea, then maybe consider what I'm doing and just put that one speciality wedge in the bag for when you're feeling a little bit confident in yourself and fancy uh, a little bit of a fancy chip shot now and then. Anyway, as ever, thanks for watching. Thank you to Carden Park. I've been out here on the Cheshire course this morning. It's been a bit of a rough day in terms of the wind howling a little bit, but I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. Plenty more coming from an average golfer. As you've seen today, my shots aren't perfect. They're very much like most golfers hit out there. So if you want to see more of that, click that subscribe button, hit the like button, and give me your feedback down below in terms of today's video. Have you got speciality wedges in your bag or not? Right, see you soon.